Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip and today I'm going to show you how I took this image to create a really dark atmosphere within the image in Photoshop. And uh, what comes next? Oh yeah, the intro. Alright guys, so let's get going in Photoshop. Now, first things first, let's duplicate our background layer just in case something odd happens and I'm losing everything. At least I have something to fall back onto. For that, just hit Command and J, or if you're on a Windows computer, hit Control and J. J for Jaguar. Now I have a copy of my layer in lower. Now I have a copy of my layer down here, and now I can start actually working on colors and stuff and light and things like that. Now it is quite simple, really. We just have to darken down stuff and we have to take out color. Now, and potentially even add some different colors if we feel like. Let's see how it goes. Now what I'm gonna do just to darken stuff down, my normal go-to thing is kind of the curve adjustment layer. You can have different kind of techniques how you do that. I'm just normally going to the curve adjustment layer and just drag it the curve down. Now when I drag it down right now, I'm just looking at the sort of left hand side of the image because that's the one which I want to have really dark. And by the way, yes, I do realize the image is completely tilted, but I think in this case it actually, I don't know, it adds a cool effect, I think, no? because it's really nice constant shift, tilt shift. I kind of I kind of like that. Now let's go from here and let's, now that we have darkened the stuff down to maybe something like that, let's make sure that we are actually not affecting our main actor today, which is that funny horse. Now for that, I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard, which will bring up my marquee tool. Make sure, double check on the left hand side that you actually have your elliptical marquee tool. If not, just select it on the left hand side, I guess. Now that we have that, I'm gonna draw, draw in a nice circle to something like maybe that. I'm gonna place it somewhere maybe here. And once I have that, with my curve adjustment selected, I'm gonna hit a shift and backspace on my keyboard. I'm gonna fill that selection with black. I'm gonna hit Command D to deselect. So now I have a beautiful spotlight. It looks horrendous. So let's fix this. What we can do is we have to blur this out. We can do this in different ways. We can either go to blur, a filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur, or we just double click on the layer mask itself and use the feather effect right here. And I'm probably gonna go for something like 300, 350 even, maybe even a bit more feathering. Something like, potentially something like this. That's even 500, maybe maybe 400 something. Maybe let's let's just go with that. I, I don't know. Let's just do this. So once we have that, now we have a sort of a spotlight, right? And coolly, coolly, we can walk. We can walk. Yeah, we could not move. Wrong button. We can transform that and change the shape of it if we have to a little bit. For instance, if I realize it's a little bit too far to the center of the image, I can just hit Command or Control T, which brings up my transform tool. And I can just grab one of the edges and drag it over just a little bit so that it's a little bit more on the horse itself. I can also drag it down a little bit to maybe like that and drag it a little bit further to the right. Not too far though. Once I'm kind of happy, I'm going to hit enter and get my brush back so that we are ready for the next step. Now, this is just one step I'm doing right now. You can adjust that. So you could, for instance, go in and take a black brush uh, get a black rosa with an opacity of something like 20% or whatever and remove that darkness from area or if you use a white brush bring the darkness out in certain in certain areas a bit more right so if i wanted to i can make sure that this horse in the background is a little bit darker and i also might want to with an opacity of 10% just bring back a little bit more darkness right here so that it doesn't look like a circle around the horse so now that I have done that, I'm kind of happy with our sort of darkening down part of the image. Now I want to put a bit more attention on the horse and the one in the front here. So I'm going to make it actually a little bit brighter. We can do this in many ways. I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to hit Command or Control J for Jaguar, which makes a copy of my curve adjustment layer. And now I can go ahead and invert that layer mask by hitting Command or Control and I for Idaho for invert. Now, now that I have inverted that, I go to the actual curve adjustment and just increase it instead of decrease it. I'm gonna increase it just ever so slightly, maybe something like that, which is actually not so ever so slightly, but you get the idea. <laughs> now I can go ahead and theoretically work again on the darkness brightness relationship. So maybe I don't like, for instance, that it's um, that we have kind of a harsh edge here between light and dark. That's something you're gonna have to decide to completely for yourself. I might just take it out a little bit, just a little bit here with a black uh, with a yeah with a black brush. 
So just that we don't have that much of a circle going on. Uh, but other than that, I think that's actually not a bad thing. I kind of like that. So now, of course, everything has still color. And I think in this image, there are no really nice colors if you get if you get my drift. It's just a random grassland with a, with a bunch of weeds in between. And the sky is nice and dramatic, yes, but not enough to actually bring it out with colors. So let's get rid of the colors. We don't actually need them. So I'm going to create a quick hue saturation layer just by clicking on the symbol. And once I have done that, I'm going to bring down the saturation after clicking the colorize button. So I colorize, bring down saturation and choose the hue which I like, which gives the image a nice feel. So I'm going to go with something like that, maybe. That's actually not bad at all. So it is not black and white, right? I just want to stress this image is not black and white. There is a certain color tone to it, but it's very subtle. It might as well be black and white, actually, but I'm, I'm, I like it more like that. That's completely up to you, of course. Now, so now that we have the image in this kind of way, the colors are taking being taken out, so the attention is really on the horse now. I mean, it's like the thing that jumps out literally. What I want to do is it's more like a white ghost right now, and I just want to give it a little bit more of a definition in its face place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a so-called stamp visible, which copies everything that you can currently see onto a new layer. So for that, I'm going to hit Command or Control on the Windows, Alt, Shift and E on my keyboard. And now I have a layer that has all the information on it. So I can drag that around if I wanted to. Now with that layer selected, I'm going to change its blend mode from normal down to soft light. And I'm going to go to filter, other and high pass. Now before I do that, let's actually zoom into the hall so that you can see what this is going to do. Put the hall somewhere like here. And then I'm going to go to filter, other and high pass. Now doing that lets us select a radius. So you can use the high pass filter in combination with blend modes of layers for like crazy stuff. Like you can sharpen things, yeah, right? So you can increase the contrast. Um, you can sort of increase facial features for what we are using it now, which is nothing else than increasing the contrast really. So choose a radius where you think that the features you have in the face or whatever object you have get better. So if I switch off and on the preview, and especially if you look at that hair here, right, it gets a lot more definition because we're actually increasing that contrast between the different parts of the hairs, I guess. So I can either increase that if I have the feeling I need it a bit more pronounced. Maybe let's leave it, leave it with something like that. 24%, uh, 24 pixels is actually not bad. I kind of, I'm kind of digging that. So if we switch it on and off, yeah, I like that. It's less glowy. It's actually more like, you know, a normal horse. So let's hit OK on that one. Now, of course, it did actually do that for the whole image, right? So now if I switch it on and off, you can see that we have sort of brightened these kind of spots we have in our image here. These white, bright, blah, those are words, bright spots. They are now even brighter and jump out, which is not really what I want. So I'm going to pop a layer mask on that one, invert that layer mask, zoom into my horse friend here. And with a white brush and an opacity of 100%, I'm just going to start to paint that into my horse. Look at my horse. My horse is amazing. So I'm just going to paint that in just like that quickly and roughly. Also a little bit here on that back and on the fat belly. Awesome. It is actually quite a beautiful horse. I mean, you must say. Now, if we zoom out just a little bit and we're going to look at the before and after, you see the horse has way more definition. If we zoom in, for instance, on this part and we have a look, yeah, you see that makes a big difference. And I like what it's doing there. I like what we're putting down. Awesome. So now we have given the horse a little bit more of a greater feel, I suppose. So now there is not too much left to do. You can either stop here, but I want to add one more thing, which is a little bit more of a blue color um, because I think it feels warmer than I had intended it originally. So for that, I'm going to create a new layer by hitting Command or Control, Alt, Shift and N for new layer. And I'm going to fill that using my bucket tool with a color. That can be any color. I normally fill it with a random brown because I'm going to change it anyway. I'm going to change the blend mode of that particular layer from, nor from normal, normal down to soft light. So now we have an even browner effect, which makes it even warmer, which is not really what we intended. All good though. What I can do is I'm going to take a hue saturation layer and I'm going to clip it to our color layer. I can do that either by hitting the little button here, so like that, uh, or I'm going to hit Command or Control, Alt and G on my keyboard. 
Doing that will essentially make it so that every change I make here only affects the color layer I see here, which is kind of awesome. So now I can go ahead and change the hue and it will only affect the hue for that particular color layer. Now I want to go into this kind of color direction. So I'm going to select it, I'm going to close that down, and now I'm going to decrease the opacity of that particular color layer to something like 30-40% maybe something like that. Now if we look at the before, before it's still a little bit warm, now it has a bit of a colder feel to it, right? And that's just something I kind of like. Now it really depends on what you want to do. If you don't like that, that's totally understandable. You could always go ahead and make it so that you don't have it everywhere. So I could just pop in the layer mask on that and hit Command and I to hide the effect and now with a white brush I could start and paint that bluish tone in wherever I feel like with an opacity of say 50% maybe or 45 in my case because I push random buttons. By the way, you can change the opacity quickly by just hitting buttons, the number keys on your keyboard and doing that, for instance, if I hit five, I'm going to choose an opacity of 50%. It's kind of awesome to increase the speed of your, of your workflow a little bit like that. So let's put a little bit like that and maybe let's remove it here again a bit. Just something like that. It really depends what you want to do and how much you want to sort of mix them together. Uh, I'm going to leave that. Well, actually, it's a little bit too blue for my taste here. You can't, cannot leave it like that. Okay. Well, I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> All right. And maybe lastly, just for good measure, I'm going to take another curve adjustment layer, bring down the curve to something like that, and make sure I paint that increased darkness into my sky using a white brush and 100% opacity. Like that, just to give it the extra feel of drama. Awesome. So now within a couple of moments, we went from, of course, a simple normal horse image like that to something which is really dramatic, really a dark mood. I mean, obviously there is no happiness in this image. And even the horse in that sense, it's kind of a bit threatening thinking about it. Hmm. Interesting. But that's all you have to do. Woo. And so we've been creative in Photoshop once more. Love it. Um, why would I do these kind of abstract images? Be just because I like it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing it. You know what I mean? If you want to keep it more natural, it's totally fine. Whatever is your jam. But being a little bit out of the box and a little bit more abstract in these kind of scenarios, I kind of dig that. I love that. Now, um, I hope you did like the video. If you did, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe because that's going to help me out a lot. Other than that, get out there, take some pictures yourself and do some weird editing with them just like as I did here right now. You have a good one. I shall see you the next time and bye. Bye.